Hello, welcome to my channel. My name is Lindsay, and this is Waldorf Inspired Roots. Today's video will be part four of my series of videos sharing our Waldorf Inspired 10th grade curriculum choices and resources. This video will primarily cover the two world wars and the Great Depression. to ace American history in one big fat notebook and it is the complete middle school study guide um, this there's a series of books for um, many different subjects of this the everything you need to ace books is what we call them here uh, this one is for middle school but they don't have a high school uh, one for American history I'm not sure why, probably because American history is something that you primarily learn and master in middle school and then you do revisit it often in high school, but um, anyways, it doesn't matter. Um, American history is American history. What you would learn in middle school, you would learn in high school, but maybe just in more detail. We do actually prefer our textbook to be less detailed and more pertinent information, and then we pull in the detail in other ways. So I'm not mad at it um, <laughs> that it's, you know, takes out some of the fluff. So this is his final, um, his final American history unit. And it's a lot to cover. It's going to cover units seven, eight, nine, and 10, which our other units only had two. I mean, I'm sorry, our other uh, main lesson blocks only had two units that it was trying to cover. And so unfortunately, we only have enough time to do four main lesson blocks for American history. So uh, we may do an additional one for whatever we're not able to cover sometime in the summer, but, um, or the following year. So this is gonna be at the very end of the year. I do believe this is actually his very last um, main lesson block entirely. So it is gonna cover World War I, the Roaring Twenties, the Great Depression and the Dust Bowl. The New Deal, World War II, Pearl Harbor, Japanese internment, Nazis, Holocaust, uh, the atom bomb, and then we are, I didn't even write it on here because I just don't think that we're, this is so much already. I don't know how far we're going to get, but if we're able to get there, uh, you know, it would also cover uh, the Korean War, Vietnam War, um, you know, this uh, mission to the moon and space and um NASA and, and things like that, but I, I'm really pretty certain that we are not going to get to that until another unit that we'll have to do at a later time. So uh, if you haven't seen my other videos, just a quick how you use this book. If anything highlighted in yellow are vocabulary words, anything highlighted in green are definitions, and anything in blue pen are important people, places, dates, and terms. And um, so this is starting at unit seven. And so it starts with World Wars and uh, Modern America, 1900s to 1930s. And I'm just gonna flip through. I'm gonna stop here though, because at the end of each, so each unit has several chapters and each, at the end of each chapter, there's a check your knowledge section, which asks questions. And then on the reverse side, uh, it will give you the answers. Now, uh, he does his, he has a morning basket that he does with daily work that is all review. Um, and he does that independently in the morning, but his main lesson um, time we do together. And so I don't typically need to see the answers, but I do flip to it just to make sure that I'm not incorrect. But uh, how we work these is I have the book for this part and I'll orally ask him the questions and make sure that he is able to answer them. We do work on a mastery um, grading scale, which means we don't move on from one thing until he's mastered it, um, at which point we, you know, I'd feel confident to move on. And then that way I know that when we get to the end of, you know, whatever subject, and we do this for every subject, but when we get to the end of whatever subject we are learning, I can confidently say that he uh, is, you know, understands the material and knows, you know, the subject well. So, um, and so for the rest of this, I am actually just going to quickly flip through. That's how all of the units and chapters are. Um, and so I'm just going to kind of flip through quickly. Quickly. 
And then, um, yeah, so we're getting all the present day. Don't know how much. And it actually does go through. This talks about 9-11, war on terror. So this is pretty, pretty, this comes to pretty current. So there you have it. Now I'm going to actually... I don't want to lose my spot, so I apologize. I'm going to take two seconds to try to put my marker or my bookmark where it was. Oh, one more. Now, each of the units are color coded at the bottom, which makes it really easy to find the next unit. So there we go with that. Okay, so the next type of books that I'm going to talk about today are reference books. And the first reference book that I'm going to talk about was in my other videos. Um, it's by the Smithsonian. It is Timelines of Everything. This covers um, history from, I mean, space, uh, the Big Bang Theory and the dinosaurs all the way to, you know, current uh, things. So it's not just American history. But the reason why I wanted to show you this one first um, is to show you my post-it note obsession. So when I am planning any unit, I use post-it notes so that I can mark up my book to know how I'm going to be using it. Now, when I turn to any post-it, uh, this one says American History 1, so I know I'm not using that. This is American History 3. So here is the first American History 4 post-it. So this is about World War One. It is a timeline, so we will reference that as needed. The next post-it note says American History 4 as well, and it is about the 1920s. Um, and then we've got World War II in Europe. And then we've got, this one says War at Home. It looks like a timeline. We have the Holocaust. Um, this one is uh, about the D-Day landings, the Pacific War, um, the Korean War. So some of these we might not even get to, like the Pacific War, the Korean War. Um, and for sure, I don't think we'll get to any of this. But um, it's something that we'll have to do at a further date just because we just will run out of time. I think between the two world wars and the Great Depression alone, that's going to take up uh, quite a bit of our time. We've got the Civil Rights Movement. Uh, for sure, actually, though, just so I make this uh, known, some of these things are so uber important, in my opinion, that um, the Civil Rights Movement and NASA and, um, and things, we have to get to it, <laughs> obviously, at some point. So we, we'll probably have to do like a mini little unit either in the summer or next year. For sure, there's just no way because we have to get to that. So um, I can put together another video um, if we have to do that or do an update video and let you know if we have to do that. So the next book that I uh, want to show you is was in my other videos as well. It's the only other repeat um, other than a game. And so it's America's Monuments, Memorials, and Historic Sites. This is all photographs from reenactments and museums. Um, and of American history. So everything in here pertains to American history. So we will use this one a lot, but I have not gone through to market. So I don't know how much of this will pertain to this particular unit, um, unit study or main lesson block. So I'm not sure how much of this will be used during this particular main lesson block, but I'm sure that there are things in here that I will be able to use. I, I would be very surprised if there wasn't. So. Um, but that's some of the photos for that. And then these three books are the reference books that are 100% this unit. Um, we have, actually I want to flip them around so they're kind of in an order. Um, we have World War One, and this is DK Find Out. And then we also have, D, it's DK, uh, I believe is the publisher, but it's uh, DK Eyewitness World War One, And then we have the DK Eyewitness World War Two. This book here, I think there's not as much information, but there are a ton of photographs, and I'm just going to kind of flip through these. The photographs are incredible in here, and um, yeah, there's, see, there's not a ton of information, so I believe that this is a World War One reference book for slightly younger 
uh, kids, maybe later elementary grades. Um, but again, there's still plenty of information that, that we can learn from here. So, <clears throat> and this would be a quick reference. So, um, this one I believe has a lot more information and a lot more text. Yeah, see, there's a ton in here, but it's still little. Um, chunks of information along with pictures, so it's still gonna be a really nice reference with the photograph aspect of it, but it has a lot more information. So that's that one. And then we've got the World War II, which is the same as the other one, but it's the Second World War. And I'll just kind of flip through. So the next type of um, uh, uh, books that I want to talk about are chapter books. This unit study or main lesson block in particular, I have the most books for and um, I'm not 100% sure that whether or not we'll get through them all but during this unit, but we will read these for sure throughout the summer. Uh, I do give my son a reading list throughout the summer, and so even if we're a little more leisure with doing like main lessons or anything like that, he at least has to read every day, and so we'll carry whatever one's over if we don't get to any, but we do have five weeks, so we might get through these actually. Uh, so this is Anne Frank, The Diary of a Young Girl. Um, it Anybody who's not familiar, um, it's the story of Anne Frank who... Um, lived during World War II and the Holocaust and her and her family were Jewish and were sent to I believe Auschwitz but I could be wrong there I, I can't quite remember but to a concentration camp and um, this is a diary she kept during that time and it was published after her passing so um, this book is relatively thick although and the text is definitely smaller than some of the other books I've shown in some of my other um, curriculum choice videos but uh, this book will maybe take us mm, I don't know two weeks ish probably to get through and we will do this as a read aloud at the beginning of our main lesson time and then I thought actually let me just quickly flip through I thought there were actually a few photographs somewhere nope I guess well oh no here they are um, I thought they were in the middle when I was younger and read it, but there are some photographs of her actual handwriting and, and writing, as well as um, the attic space that they were hiding in, picture of her from before every, you know, um, the Holocaust and the war happened from, I believe this was before and it was her in school. So um, this is a very sad story that had a, it's a true, you know, true story. It's actually her diary and um, sad ending, but um, a great read. The next book is about the Great Depression. Now, this is an interactive history adventure. It's by Michael Bergen. My son loves these type of books. It has three story paths, 43 choices, 22 endings. And um, let me just show you how this works. I did have this in another video, but in case you didn't watch one of the other videos, um, let me show you how this book works. It has five chapters and the beginning tells you how to use the book. At the end of each page it'll either tell you to turn the page so you would read and then it would tell you to turn the page and then you would keep reading until you get to a page that looks like this and so it'll give you three choices and I'll just tell you what these ones are just so that you have an idea. To be a former soldier seeking government help turn to page 13. To be a teenager living the life of a hobo, turn to page 47. To be a young man working for the Civilian Conservation Corps, uh, turn to page 73. And so then you would turn to whatever page you choose for the sake of uh, time. I'm just gonna turn to the next page, which would have been the first choice, page 13. And so then you would read that and you would continue reading again until you got to a page that had choices. Now, because there are three story paths, 43 cho choices, and 22 endings, you could read this book many, many times and choose different things each time and get a different 
ending a different result and a different story. So my son likes having choices and he likes reading these more than once and seeing where you know the, the choices he makes take him differently in different ways. So uh, he'll really enjoy that. The next book is Lois Lowry, Number the Star, or it's by Lois Lowry. It's called Number the Stars. And this is um, another story. Um, it's a historical fiction book. Um, and it does take place also during the Holocaust. And it's about another Jewish little girl. And um, she is from Copenhagen. And I actually haven't read this since I was in like fifth grade. I just remember loving it. Although I don't remember 100% what it's about, but um, I just remember loving it. So he will be reading this. This is a fourth or fifth reading level, but again, I like to mix, um, you know, different reading level books. And this is a new book. I've never read it, but it's called Out of the Dust. It's by Karen Hess, I believe you pronounce. Um, and this one is about the Dust Bowl and uh, which was around the time of the Great Depression. And so this is what the text looks like. It's not a lot. And actually, I don't even know. It actually looks like a little short, I don't know, is this poetry? Possibly poetry. Not entirely sure. I haven't read it. Yeah, I think it's like poetry, but it forms like a story. So that's interesting. Uh, I can do an update to let you know how we liked that or, or what it was about, but we this is um, gonna be one of the ones that we read. Now the next thing that I want to show you are some picture books. The first one is sort of a cross between a picture book and a reference book, but it is called The Ch uh, Children of the Great Depression by Russell Friedman. And this gives a lot of information that just um, gives you a sense of what it was like to be a child during the Great Depression and, and what that was like. And so I think that this will be a good perspective book and a book to kind of help my, help my son um, get a sense of what life was like for a kid back then. So... Um, and that, that will probably be part of read alouds and, and, you know, we'll reference it, but I don't know that we'll read the whole thing. Um, but I can let you know again in an update how we end up using that. So this is a book that I read quite a long time ago. It is, this one is an actual picture. Actually, the next two are picture books. And these are books that you could read to a young child. My, um, preschool age kids that I watch and my two and a half year old son will probably sit through these just fine as well. Uh, this one is called The Wall. It's by Eve Bunting. And if I'm not mistaken, uh, this is about a father who takes his young son to the Vietnam Veterans Memorial to find the name of um, the grandfather. And it's the grandfather that the little boy never got to know. And I guess he uh, tells him about the grandfather and stories and things like that but the illustrations are absolutely gorgeous and uh, this one is about the Vietnam War so if we don't get to the Vietnam War during this unit then we would just read this book uh, either during the summer or during his 11th grade year when we do a lesson about that so um, that's that and then the next one is uh, what sank the world's biggest ship and other questions about the Titanic. It is by Mary Kay Carson. If I haven't said it already, I can't remember. Um, I'll link everything down below. This is about the Titanic. Again, I'm not sure if we'll get this far in history. Uh, actually, I can't even, I have to be honest with you, I can't remember what year the Titanic even sank. It's been a while. So <laughs> uh, I will place this where it needs to go. Um, I'm sure that it's in our textbook. Um, but yeah, so if we don't get to this, again, it'll be one that we um, do later. Oh, that's a good comparison picture. Um, this one looks like it has quite a bit of information. Uh, so maybe my two and a half year old wouldn't sit through this, to be honest. But um, 
it looks like a good deal of information. It has great illustrations. This is still one that we could get through pretty quickly. Um, maybe part of our read alouds, we could get this done in two days, um, probably. So, and there is that. We're just doing a little, um, you know, maybe a day or two worth of the Titanic when we get to it. However, um, I might do a unit by itself during his 11th grade year of the Titanic. So here we'll just kind of introduce it and then do a full, because we have actually a museum. We live in the Las Vegas area in Nevada and we have a museum about the Titanic here that I would love to take him to. So we might do like a, a little mini unit during his 11th grade year of just the Titanic. I think that'd be fun. So the next thing that I'm going to show you was in my last three history um, main lesson block videos. It is the Keys of History, um, and it is from the Year One History course for the Good and the Beautiful. And I'm just going to show you really quick. Uh, this game we'll be using through all of our American History uh, main lesson blocks. It has a game board. It does reference some things from world history and some things from American history. And the reason why I'm okay with that is because we did world history this year for ninth grade. And so that these things will just be a review. And, um, you know, the other things, he has played this game before, so he knows some of them. But it'll be a good review and a good, um, you know, thing to start our day with. Um, for that. So the way you play, you roll the dice, you move your piece around the board, and you get tokens if you get answers correctly and things like that. Um, but whatever you land on, you would find the coordinating card that coordinates with that. And I'll just kind of flip through these as I'm talking so that you can kind of see. Uh, but then on the back side of these, it, each one has three questions. And uh, you can choose, okay, during this game, we're going to read question the first questions. And then when you play a different, you know, another time, you can say, okay, today we're going to read the second questions. And then so on and so forth. Okay, today we're going to read the third questions. And you can just kind of repeat it that way. Or uh, you could do the first questions for several times until you feel confident that you know them pretty well and then move on um, there's so many different ways actually to play this and there are different like versions in the game instructions if, if I remember correctly and there's a couple yeah three ways to play and so there's uh, different different ways there and so that is that game um, and the very last thing that I there's two, but they're the same type of thing. These are going to be where we get our inspiration for our projects this year. Uh, the first one that we're gonna talk about is the Great Depression for Kids. Um, and it has 21 activities. Oh, if I can turn it, sorry. <laughs> um, so it is going to give you some history. There's a timeline. It'll give you some history. It has great um, photographs and and things and then you'll come to a page this one actually has a lot of history so that's actually fantastic and then you'll get to a page eventually um, nope not that okay <laughs> got to one activity investigate the science of paper airplanes and so it'll tell you a little um, bit of information about this one in particular is the age of flight um, it'll give you a supply list and then it gives you instructions on how to make paper airplanes. My son will love that. He loves making paper airplanes. Um, the very next page is another activity. It says play the stock market. It'll give you again some information, what you need, and then the instructions. And so as you're going through, you get bits of history and then in between you get activities. And I'm just going to flip through. Uh, but this is where we'll pull our activities and we try to do at least one activity every single day um, that we do like our main lesson time we don't do main lessons on wednesdays uh, because my son has a co-op and we visit a local farm and help out on the farm so for him he uh, just does his his main lessons and daily work on monday tuesday thursday friday so um, this one is the same thing, but it is World War II, and I'll just sort of flip through this. I do want to just give you an example. Again, it's got the timeline. It's the same series, so 
it gives you history and information and then you'll get to a, a page that will have an activity eventually um, draw a recruiting poster uh, gives you a little background the materials and how to do it See, uh, I think we're going into Japanese internment and stuff a little bit, maybe. Uh, break the code, tells you materials, gives you um, some background, and it's talking about um, codes, coding, and things. Um, let's see, camouflage activity. Again, information, materials, and, and what you're going to do. That sounds like it'll be fun, making your own camouflage. Organization of the army. Um, yeah, I'll just kind of making every scrap count. Okay. So I'll just kind of flip through. But yeah, this will be where we get our projects for this period, too. I couldn't find these. For this series, I couldn't find one for World War One, so I'm, I'll probably have to look online and I will try to find maybe on Teachers Paid Teachers or um, there's a few other sites. I can try to link some of the sites that I use to get additional things, but I'll try to um, find some projects that pertain to World War One um, as well. So that is all the things that I have. This is the last... Um, uh, curriculum and resource uh, video that I'm putting out that is specifically for American history but the next videos that I put out will um, be they will also be curriculum choices and resources but they will be for his other subjects um, which include uh, high school geometry um, chemistry a geology um, unit study, uh, very Waldorf inspired, inspired creative writing that we are so excited about. My son isn't the biggest fan of writing and he's even excited for our creative writing um, main lesson block this upcoming year. So I think that's all of his main um, subjects. So look forward to um, those videos coming out. Those will be the next videos that I film. And I hope you were able to get some inspiration for, um, you know, a American history main lesson or um, um, unit study that you might be planning for your kids. And if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Please share any comments or feedback in um, the comment section below. And we'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye.